Hello there, Don Canet here at Cartagena, Spain, where I'm testing new uh, 2020 Triumph Speed Triple RS. This bike is uh, in a lot of ways similar to the model that we rode uh, three years ago. Yeah, 2017 here in Spain as well at uh, Circuit Catalunya. Um, what Triumph has done though, they've paid a little extra attention to the engine for this model year. They had to do some updates regarding Euro 5 emissions, which is more of a exhaust emissions. Basically, they had to make a cleaner uh, burning engine and they've succeeded in that goal. They call it their Euro 5 Plus. So I think they uh, overachieved. And the beauty of it is this 765 inline three engine is what is being used in Moto2, the world championship right now. So 2019, first year for uh, this triple in Moto2, uh, Triumph has learned quite a bit from being the uh, spec engine supplier for that uh, championship series. And so some of that engineering has been applied to this powertrain and they've uh, actually increased the mid-range power. They, they were pretty happy with this being a naked street bike. It makes about 123 horsepower. So their, their goal was to keep that peak horsepower output, but improve the mid-range delivery throughout the mid-range. And they've achieved that uh, upwards of about almost 10% increase at 8,000 RPM. Filled in, you know, over the, cross of, uh, the course of that mid-range, uh, it's not plus 10% all the way through, but at the biggest uh, discrepancy compared to last year's bike, it's an honest 10% improvement and actually much smoother throughout the mid-range. They've lightened the inertia. They've uh, refined the, uh, the gears for the primary drive off the crank into the clutch and the uh, counterbalancer shaft. They've improved the, the, the cut on the gears. I won't go into technical details, but it's allowed them to eliminate the uh, backlash reduction gear that used to be on the backside there. And so that's uh, taken some inertia out of the uh, the drivetrain, snappier revs, just the overall improvement in the electronics and the fueling, their traction control strategy is uh, much improved over its predecessor. Doesn't have an IMU, but you would think that it does. It's kind of interesting the way this bike reacts when it's at lean angle. And uh, Triumph's being kind of cagey when I talk to the engineer about how they achieve that. Uh, basically, you could not tell me, but I. I think it has a lot to do with uh, sensing wheel speed uh, rotation, tire circumference changes as you bank over, and so their uh, algorithms are probably really taking that into account along with other factors, RPM, throttle position, uh, gear position, that kind of stuff. So it kind of feels like the bike knows when it's leaned over and it holds back the power delivery um, if you're entering a TC state, which is more intrusive in rain mode, road mode get into sport mode, it's perfect for the street. And then on the circuit here, um, track mode is where it really unleashes the power and lets you, lets you put it to the ground and drive hard off corners. Uh, really stable out on the road ride today, and through the mountain roads, through some towns, a little bit on the highway. You know, so much like its predecessor, super chassis, same suspension components, same uh, geometry, all that's unchanged. Same great Brembo M50 brakes, monoblock calipers, a really good quality master cylinder here, this variable ratio. So that's all pretty much carryover, which is good news because it was fantastic before. And now it's uh, got a little more beams to push it off these corners. You know, new styling on the bodywork. It's kind of subtle in a lot of areas. We got some nice touches like the carbon fiber tip on this RS model. It has carbon fiber uh, cap at the end of the exhaust there. New headlight design. It's got daytime running lights that are kind of cool looking. Restyled the TFT dash, new graphics. Uh, you have selection, a choice of four different uh, presentations for the uh, dash. So all that, best news is the price remains the same. 12,550 in the US. Should be available by Christmas time. Um, so some notable improvements and they kept the price at 12,550.